So from here, now let's look into part two, right? Uh, to generate a MRP plan for top, right? So which is the second component for our table. So again, at level zero, we're going to start with the parent item. So you're given with the master production schedule uh, for the table. And from here, we are dealing with this time, the item is top. The beginning inventory is given as 100 units. In this case, we are going to use the lot size rule, economic production quantity. So again, just a gentle reminder on that. On with the uh, lot size rule as EPQ, we can order any time. We can even order two consecutive weeks or after two weeks, whatever fits with our plan. But every time we'll only ordering 400 units. And in this case, the lead time is two weeks, which means once you place the order, uh, once a plan order is released, it's going to take two weeks before you can receive that order, right? And the safety stock that you need to keep is 95 units. So please make sure you keep that constraint in mind. Okay, so the gross requirements, similar process, no production for uh, week one is going to be zero, zero for first three weeks because there's no plan production. However, we need one table top to make one table, right? So which means as we're going to make the production requirement is 200 tables, so we need 200 table tops. 100 table tops in week five, six tops in, week, uh, sorry, 100 tops in week six and so on. In this case, we don't have any scheduled receipt, right? Uh, so let's start by calculating the plant on hand for week one. So week one plant on hand is going to be beginning inventory, which means the plant on hand from the previous week, which is 100. Gross requirement is zero. No schedule receipt at the moment. No plant receipt at the moment. So that's going to be 100. So same will be for week two, as our gross requirements are, are zero for week two as well, and as well for week three, right? So let's start our plan by calculating the plant on hand inventory for week four. So in this case, we have plant on hand from week three, which is 100. Gross requirement is 200. And we have scheduled receipt, nothing, and no plant or receipt at the moment. So I'm short of 100 units, right? So I need additional 100 units to ensure that I'm satisfying all the requirements. And on top of that, I need 95 units as safety stock. So from here, we can see our net requirement is 195 units, which means 100 units to satisfy the demand plus uh, 95 units to keep the safety stock, right? We already have 100 on hand. You can even apply the net requirements formula that we have uh, in, in the slides, right? So your net requirement is gross requirement minus plan on hand plus the safety stock. Okay, so from here, yes, we need 195 units, but remember, we cannot order 195. Whenever you're going to place an order because we're using EPQ, we're going to order 400 units. So my planned order receipt is going to be 400 units. Again, a very common mistake. We are not using a lot for lot rule at this point, right? So your planned order receipt is always going to be equals to EPQ whenever we use EPQ model, right? Economic production quantity. So now we are planning to receive 400 units on week number four, right? And we know that there's a two weeks of lead time. So in order to receive these units on week four, we should inform our supplier two weeks ahead, right? So your planned order release is going to be week two. So now we know the planned order receipt, we can now update our planned on, on, on hand for week four. So that's going to be plan on hand from week three, minus gross requirement, plus schedule receipts, and plus plan order receipt, right? Because we have updated this information now. So we need to update the plan on hand inventory too, right? Don't leave it minus 100. That's what we calculated earlier, right? Okay, so that is going to be 300 units. So we are good, right? So we have 300 units, that's above the safety stock, okay? So this is kind of ex explanation that's being provided, right? So the net requirement we calculated that we needed additional 100 units to satisfy the demand 
plus 95 units to keep the safety stock but this is a lot size rule so we can do out of fixed quantity so which is 400 units and there's a two weeks of lead time so in case we want to receive these 400 units at start of week four we should be putting a planned order release uh, at start of week two right and the same process will be followed right so for instance here when we go to week five if we go do the calculations for week five for planned on hand the planned on hand from week three uh, is 300 units minus 150 is the gross requirement for week number five no schedule receipt at the moment no planned order release so 150 right is the uh, planned on hand inventory after satisfying the cross requirement which is greater than 95 right so we're good we don't need to put any order with a supplier right however when you reach uh, the week number six uh, you're going to have week six it's going to be 150 right so that's the planned on hand from the previous week minus 100 as cross requirement no schedule receipt and at the beginning there's no plan to see two so for week six we have planned on hand after satisfying the cross requirement uh, 50 units right uh, this is less than the safety stock we need additional 45 units to make up for the safety stock right so that's why your net requirement is 45 because we already have 50 left after satisfying the requirement what we need uh, 45 more to make it 95 so that we can keep the minimum safety stock but remember this is EPQ we cannot order 45 units from a supplier so that's why you end up ordering 400 units and there's a two weeks of lead time so that is offset right so we should be releasing our two weeks earlier right okay so again give it a go for the EPQ model right and if you have any questions please feel free for me to ask and in next video, we'll go through uh, the, the next model, right? Okay, thank you.